Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the most dangerous woman in the world, the fabulous Tanya Kay. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi, Ron. Hi, Jimmy. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I wish she even knew who you were already. Everybody knows who I am. It's you they don't know who. Oh, okay. It's me that they don't know. You got to love it. So I don't have to introduce. No, no. I, we were at a party with Michael. Uh, what was his name? My friend Michael. Michael. New York, the party. Michael Musto? Michael Musto. And a guy came over to me and he said, hello, Jimmy Starr. And I said, no, I'm the other one. <laughs> So anyway, she already knows that you're our cool, outrageous man about town. But we yes. also have the guy behind the boards, Chad Murphy. Tanya K, Hi, welcome Chad. to the show. Welcome. Meanwhile, I Looking love, good. love. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I got to tell her. I'm, I'm bursting. We have a chat love, room. I love your hair. I love I want. I want it so bad. It is awesome. I'm too old. I would do my hair purple or blue in a minute. Do it. Oh. No, I'm 76 cool. years you old. Look like an old jerk. With- hmm? <laughs> you get away with it if you just do it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, maybe for my 77th birthday, I'll do it. I'm <laughs> dying to do it, like navy blue, dark navy blue. I'm all about the pink. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a big girl, that's why. <laughs> so hold on, we, we have a chat room full of people, Very. so say hello to everybody in the chat room. Everybody hey, loves your hair. Buddy. How's it going, you guys? There I you love go. it. It's so much fun. So you're in L.A., right? I'm in Los Angeles. It's a perfect spring day today. Shut look. up. <laughs> yeah, it's we're freezing in, here. We're in, we're in Pennsylvania and it's cold and terrible. And, cold. Uh, not nice. Not. It's not. Fun. But your hair came out so even. Good colorist. Perfect. Thanks. And it's nice and shiny. We just I'm did jealous. it. I we did na- it in their living room. What? Just now. We did it in the living room. Oh, he came to the house. He did it in the living room. Uh, it, it was a she, and we did it in her living room with cats around and doggies. I got to play with animals. Well, <laughs> I could, I'm going to ask a very rude question. What'd that cost? What's their friend? So it probably didn't cost much. No, let's hear. It didn't. <laughs> For me? Could I yeah. be her friend? <laughs> I just bought the product, so the product was nine bucks. Good. Can I be her friend? <laughs> Actually, it looks fabulous. And you've always had a different color hair because it hasn't always been purple, has it? No. Um, over the last year, I've been doing purple, lavender, kind of a silver. And it keeps fading because it's a pretty fragile color. Right. But yeah, otherwise, I have blonde hair. And when it fades out, it goes to blonde anyway. Oh, and. Wait. Did you just do your hair for your burlesque show this weekend? Because I know you have a big show. I think it's this weekend, right? Thanks for asking. Yeah, we have a show this weekend. Pin Up Pole Show is going up in Long Beach on Friday and in North Hollywood on Saturday. So we're, Pin Up Pole Show is the show. And yes, the hair will make an appearance there. But I didn't do it for that. I did it because life is it's better. It's you. Than it's you. Yeah. yeah. Well, where, where, wait, where in Long Beach are you performing? At the Federal. Okay. So first of all, you guys, because Tanya is, is is someone who does everything. She has all kinds of cool things. I made some little notes. So I want to go back to how I first met her, but we'll talk about this since we've already got it on here. So she does the pinup pole show. It's classic cars, pinup girls, retro burlesque, and pole champions, which I'm not sure if I even know what that is. Um, uh, but it's done all very tasteless because I went on and, and, and looked at all kinds of stuff online. It's very tasteful and really fun. It really looks like a blast. Um, so you've got two of them, one Friday and one Saturday. Yeah, the one on Saturday, we have a full classic car show ahead of time. So pinup girls come out, uh, photographers join us. There's photography, live music by Soul Legion. We also have upstairs in the venue, I'm really excited about this, because pinup is a retro art form that really means pinning up a piece of art on the wall, whether it's illustrated or photographic. So to do pinup as a performance art is kind of like edgy and I'm pushing the limits, like I'm defining what it is, but I like to incorporate legit, authentic, old style pinup into every show, meaning illustration and photography. So we shoot photos out with the classic cars, our pinup girls do, and then upstairs, 
Girls Drawn Girls. It's an all-female art collective. The women are doing a grand pinup art display. So we have an art show going on upstairs, our red carpets, a live illustration by one of Girls Drawn Girls artists, and um, a devotion vodka and bootleggers sponsored red carpet. Very excited about that. And then the 75-minute main event which is pole champions, retro burlesque, uh, vocal. Uh, now, what is retro burlesque exactly? Well, like, burlesque. like like Minsky's burlesque. Sure, this so, thing, 1955 to 1965. Okay, for I was stripping. I was stripping as a woman in 1960. I impersonated Jane Russell for years and years, and I stripped. The only thing I didn't like about the striptease was at the end we had to unhook our brassiers to show the audience that we were men. Oh. And, and I found that very, very humiliating. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, I didn't, I thought, it looked like I had a mastectomy. <laughs> and I didn't like and it. And he was beautiful as Jane Russell. Yeah, I he was, was young. Like I was young and thin and agile, but I, in person, I danced. And I want to teach you something in burlesque. If you don't have this beat, in your music, you will never do proper burlesque. Boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, ba boom, 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 ba 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 boom. It's true. You strip to that, you're going to be a star. You know, in 1960, 1960, the stripper, the song, the stripper. I used to sing a song. <clears throat> I yeah. am looking for trouble. I don't care what the people say. It doesn't matter what the people say, what the people say, what the people say. I'm going to find me a lover, one in his prime, one who can do a real good whatever. Anyway, that was my song that I sang, which was a famous song of Jane Russell's from French Line. Actually, though, because you, I mean, because besides having a pinup pole show, you're actually a burlesque performer. Because don't you, ho you host the pinup pole show. I and host. also uh, do the burlesque. I host several shows in town. I love being on the microphone. I wish I was out there now. I would definitely have come to London. You have, you have an actual, like, because I, I saw on your website, which you guys can check out Tanya's website. It's tanyak.com, T-O-N-Y-A-K-A-Y.com. You can also follow her on Twitter at Tanya K. And uh, she has uh, a showgirl in a giant champagne glass. You have a giant champagne glass that fits your whole body. Yeah, and they don't make those at Target. I had to have it fabricated. <laughs> that, that, that was done back in the early 40s. And the gal that was in the original champagne glass, her name was Cher Cherry. Uh, but her real name, and she was, uh, what's her name, the singer's sister? Oh, God, I'm so bad with names. Anyway, she was the famous woman in the champagne glass in LA. I saw you had all kinds of people that were like influences. I don't know if that was in your bio or on your website and like, who are some of the influences? Cause he'll know all of them. He's like, he's like big into, yeah, I was he had a TV show just so you know, he had a TV show on time Warner cable called set the record straight where he interviewed all the legends of Hollywood. He was friends with like Elizabeth Taylor and Jane Russell. Well, and Jane Tab Russell Hunter. and I were buddy buddies. I mean, we hung out. Um, so he wow. he's he's yeah. friends with all the like classic movie legend people, or he was. And, and I also now. had the honor of meeting and who I think Gypsy Rose Lee. Uh, oh yeah, I met her in New York. Absolutely, she that came. was one of your influences, wasn't it? Or no? Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you. Somebody came backstage. I worked at the eighty two and a couple other clubs, and somebody came backstage and said, "Ron, Gypsy Rose Lee's out there." I said, "You're kidding me! Oh my God, I'm going to strip Gypsy." And then she came back with a bunch of people and we chatted. And then I said, listen, what are you doing? You know, let me get out of this shit and uh, we'll go someplace for snacks, dinner, whatever. And she said, great. And we went up the road, uh, up the street. And we all sat there and we had coffees and desserts and stuff and hung out. And all I could ask her was, what's the secret to your success? And I'm going to pass it on to you. She said, Ron, show them nothing. <laughs> Tease them to hell, she said. Tease them to hell. And a little of this, a that. little of that, but really show them nothing. And she did it with sinister in her voice. Show them nothing like those suckers out there. Let them suffer. <laughs> it's sadistic in that thing. Okay. But she was quite lovely. And I and then she passed away not long after that. And I was so sad. 
She was, I have to tell you, Tanya, because first of all, because we have a chat room full of people. <clears throat> so Zar Drew, who lives in, in L.A., is a, is a great, great guy, and he's a big LGBT advocate around the world. And so he just wrote a thing in there that says that too bad he's straight because he's feeling – I mean, he's gay because right now he's feeling so straight because you're so beautiful. And then after that, everybody in the chat room started talking about how, like, beautiful you are. So, like, you have – New fans that might not have known about you before. Well, all the guys when they hear she's stripped, she's all a girl. All the girls like them too. But you don't, you don't, you don't strip down. You'd strip to a g-string and pasties, or do you go yeah, beyond that? Yeah, um, I, I burlesque it. In LA, that's kind of accepted that burlesquers go to pasties and. Yeah, a because if you show it all, it's nothing anymore. Then, yeah. then it goes into a whole different area. But that little bit of of like Gypsy said showed them nothing. Works. Men don't want to see women dancing naked. They like them in lingerie. And I agree with that. You know, it, it's sex, sexy. When you yeah. see it all, it's nature. I agree, too. Actually, it's not as, it's not as cool. So, okay, so you guys... You know, I just wish we had film back then, like yeah. cameras, like today. We didn't have that. You'd yeah. have to have come in with big cameras and lighting, and who did that? So wait, wait, the biggies. Okay, Cost so a lot listen of money. up, you guys. If you want to go see the Pinup Poll Show this weekend, you can get more information by going to... Tanya, where do I tell oh, them to go? For me. <laughs> Pinupholeshow.com. P I love it. I love it. Go to pinupholeshow.com. Show.com. And we're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you can catch up with us there too. Actually, you tweet about it too. So you guys, if you follow at Tanya K, you'll get all the information and you should follow her because she's super cool. A hey. fact. A fact. From Jane Russell's mouth to my ears, Rita Hayworth was very upset during the Second World War because she was on a few airplanes. Rita Hayworth is a pinup girl. Jane Russell was on I don't know how many airplanes, and she was the number one pinup girl in 1941-42. She was photographed more than any other sex goddess of the time. Look it up. See, in fact, they named a mountain, two mountains after her because of her boobs, and they called them Russell Peaks. So she had a lot of, yeah, she had a lot of publicity in pinup, but her pinup pictures are breathtakingly gorgeous. You've got to see Jane's pinups. I look forward yeah. to it. Shows nothing. She shows absolutely nothing, but so sexy. My God. You know, a little leg, a little boob, a little this. The way they did it back then was class. They're actually saying, too, how... Uh... You have to. You actually have to be really strong and in shape to really be able to dance on a pole. The pole dancing is insane. It's like deadlifting 120 pounds. Uh, it's your body weight. So these girls are amazing, and that's the feedback we get after the show. Like other people have seen variety shows, they've seen burlesque shows, but they haven't seen pole shows like this. And um, they say, it's so good to see such strong women uh, who are so funny. They think we're funny. They think we're strong. And I love it. I just I just love it. Because I wish I could do that years ago. Pole oh, yeah. Well, the, God, the, only, the, only, the only pole dancing I ever did was I put a sock puppet over my erection and made it dance. Yeah. <laughs> that was the only pole <laughs> dancing I ever did. All right, so, <laughs> That's a joke, only a joke, folks. I not know. real. Just so here's joke. the thing. So first of all, uh, everybody, Tanya, not only is she a burlesque performer and pin up, pin up pole show person, which I didn't even know any of that in, until we got her bio, because I've always followed her acting career, and, and she has a phenomenal career. She's done a lot of really great stuff. And let me tell you, the <laughs> first time I ever met Tanya, I didn't have a TV show. I didn't have any of this stuff. I was just a, a clothing designer trying to dress famous people. And we met at Megacon in Florida, which I don't even know if she remembered that, actually, but I have a Jimmy Stars the Shit video when she's on it. She's one of the people who's actually on the video. And... She was on a t TV show called Who Wants to Be a Superhero? And she was Creature, and so she was at that. She was actually the celebrity guest at Megacon where you would go and get her autograph because she was trying to be a, you know, a superhero on this TV show, and it was a fun TV show. Yeah. And I'm sure it helped launch a lot of things for you, uh, you know, just to get going because since then, which I don't know, that was, that was a pretty long time ago, but since then, your credits and stuff have, are phenomenal. Thanks. Thank you. And so it's like really cool. So how was that? Was it fun to be on that? I mean, a lot of people probably don't even remember that show. 
Uh, well, the original season w had a lot of heart because we didn't know what the premise was. I heard that the second season kind of lacked that innocence um, because they had expectations of what was supposed to happen, <laughs> but we had no clue. So it had a lot of heart and there was this innocence to it where we put all of our creativity into our own characters and... It was a lot of fun. I met amazing people on set. If you watch the show, you know I got to work with Stan Lee. So know, me, that's like the dopest thing on the the coolest don't thing. I hate that word when I use that word. Mm. I think that's the coolest thing ever. That's like he's like my bucket list guest. You know, is like I would love to have Stan Lee because I think he would be the coolest. If guest you on the private planet. message me <clears throat> what your show costs, I will contact some friends in Palm Springs. And perhaps you can bring it there. You will be a sellout because you're, everybody's gay. So, I mean, <laughs> all the queens will come running for burlesque. They love burlesque, those old bitches. But anyway, I would love to see, because we're moving to Palm Springs as soon as we can. And I would love to be there and see your show in Palm Springs with all the with all the gay guys and girls. It would be a blast. I would love it. That would, would be some audience, I mean, especially the pinup stuff. It, you're perfect for Palm Springs. Actually, you have a lot of fans in the chat room. They know like all kinds of stuff. I have like little notes written down, and they're all sending me notes. Like, please make sure you bring these things up. But and I will. So first of all, you guys, let's give a little, um, uh, let's give a little like bragging thing. If if you guys watch TV and you've seen some of these shows, these are some of the shows, not all of them, but some of the shows that you will have seen Tanya K with appearances on. First of all, The Fosters, which is one of the greatest shows like ever on mm -hmm. the planet. Uh, Jane the Virgin, Rosewood, uh, My Crazy Sex. I actually went to a, a, a party with Morris Chestnut from Rosewood one time when I was in Florida. It was really cool. He's like a really great guy. Uh, My Crazy Sex, Horror Haiku, Glee, which we've had a whole bunch of people from Glee on Glee, the show. Glee, we know, it. yeah. Uh, Friends with Benefits, Numbers, I love that show. Secret Girlfriend, Criminal Minds, and House, all great, great things. And then... Uh, you just did a, I know I, I thought this was a movie, but I think on IMTV it said it was a TV show. But you just did Puppet Master Axis Termination. Is that it's a TV both. show or a movie? It's both. It's both. Um, for all intents and purposes, think of it as the eleventh movie in the Puppet Master franchise by Full Moon Features. Um, but I've been told this is rumor that we will also be released as a mini series on El Rey Network. So oh. that. And so you know who you right. see stars in with that? Paul Logan. We had Paul oh. on for uh, the Horde, and we had him and um and some of the other people from the Horde movie. All we did on like a group, oops, a group show where they were all on at the same time. Paul Logan and I have been Facebook friends since Facebook started. Paul Logan's the coolest guy, and we had him strip like he took his shirt off yeah. so all the women could well, see that it. That didn't take too much. <laughs> no, it didn't. No, thank you. Thank you. Paul Logan loves to show it all. Absolutely. He's got he's got oh, good things to show it. though. He's got good things yep. to show though. So. so <laughs> So when is that one coming out? I mean, I love the Puppet Master movies. I used to collect all the action figures, and I used to have them all, and, and it's a really fun series. He's probably never seen it, but it's like the one where the little dolls come alive. I've seen the, the seen it. I saw the original one a million years ago. Okay. But it yeah. was about the puppets, these dolls. They came alive, but they were evil looking with crooked teeth and a, yeah, and, uh, the drills and, and, and they bit people and they stabbed yeah. people in the legs with the feet with little knives and stuff. I remember. I freaking like it was called the puppet something. I actually, you did so many cool things with people that have been on our show. I was going through your IMDb credits, looking at all the people that that we've had on the show, and I I think we're gonna give props because they're bringing it up in the chat room a lot. How how you're the only female nominee for best villain for a lead role. Uh, and, and did you win it? Did you win it? You won it. So you actually won best vi villain against all the guys. And the movie was called Bastard. Yep. Is that correct? 20th Century Fox Horror released that. It got theatrical play. It got a lot of attention um, from NBC News and all of that. And I got best villain. That's awesome. Good for you. Girls, girls hardly ever I, I, I'd like villain. to see that because I really can't picture you as a villain. Oh, I play villains. Could you be a mean bitch? I don't know what it is. I'm so nice. I bet you though you could be a mean bitch. Like I haven't seen Bastard. Let yet. me see I some let me see you be mean. Be mean and, and a villain. Hmm. That doesn't come No, that look good. constipated. <laughs> 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 That's mean. That, mean. That's, yeah, mean. that's mean. Oh, yeah, that's mean. That okay. was mean. That was nasty. So then also, you did a film called Rays where you fought with Zoe Bell, which I'm, I'm not really friends with her, but I've met her several times. She's super nice. And Doug Jones was in that, and we had Doug Jones on the show last yep. year. And uh, he was a great guest also. Like So 
So are you like a stunt woman too then? All kinds of stunt woman. Oh yeah, they stunt double T Mac Miller and Buck Bell Chase. Oh uh hold on, you I couldn't hear you on that last part. Jimmy square up. Okay, I'm squared up. Okay. You uh okay. you you stunt doubled Pink and Mac Miller, and you fought Zoe Bell. So you're also, besides being the actress and the hot lady, you're also like the the stunt person who kicks everybody's ass. Uh, yeah, I do so many weird, dangerous things anyway that it naturally translates to stunts. And usually, I just do stunts for an acting role that I've already booked. So if the acting role calls for stunts, hey, the actress can actually do them. Makes and it sense. It helps a movie a ton. Um, oh, me too. You know what I mean? Like, remember that movie Salt, where Angelina yes. Jolie, I mean, she's a great actress, and but the stunt scenes were so chopped up because they couldn't show her at all right. doing the stunts. So that's that's the opposite of what I can provide. I can provide actual athletic, you know, stunting. <laughs> It's usually the insurance companies that object to the star doing her or, or his own stunts. In the event they get injured, they stop production. It costs millions. So that's, I, that, I mean, Burt Reynolds, who I knew very well, we used to talk about Burt's stunts. Uh, actually, my best friend, Lee Winkler, managed him. That's how I knew Burt. By the way, folks, uh, I heard from people that know Burt in Florida. He's really not doing well. So if you want to pray for Burt Reynolds, Go right ahead and do so. We may be losing him soon. Um, you know who Burt Reynolds is, right? Of course. Oh, well, some people don't. Anyway, Burt Reynolds broke practically every bone in his body doing stunts. I mean, really seriously, there wasn't much left. And uh, he loved it. He found it better than acting, thrilling, and the most exciting. He, he would do stunts before he would do a, an Academy Award performance. Do you feel that way? Uh, no, it's true that you get hurt every time you do yeah. stuff. He broke. He said every bone in his body was broken. And oh, sometimes, sometimes it's bad injuries, but other times it's just aches and pains. And uh, as a mature woman, um, I prefer to uh, use my personality and my words. To deliver the you know, as I said, you're too beautiful and you have a lovely little figure, so you don't need to do stunts and break things and hurt Actually, things. because I was going to play a trailer, but when we stick, when we put the video of this out, I'm going to put your acting reel on it so everybody can see oh, it. And uh, But I don't want to play it now because that takes up time that we get to talk to you. But what is in oh. there? There's one where you have like a white mohawk-like looking thing where your hair is. What is that from? Because like, first of all, you look so tough and hot in that like it's not even funny, like like the hottest chick on the planet. Thanks. I like that one, too. It's called The Kill Corporation, and it came out on uh, on the web. It's a web series, and it's awesome. I would definitely recommend, like, I'm pretty sure you can get it on YouTube, so just YouTube The Kill Corporation. It's a full series. It's really good. It looks so hot, and it's not even funny, and everybody, like, loves it. So one thing I want to say, which is I think it's really cool, uh, because you have done a lot of horror, but you're not actually typecast as a horror actress because you've also done a lot of comedy. And that's an unusual combination because most horror people don't have an opportunity to you know, have half of their resume in horror and half of their resume in comedy. And like, uh, number one, I think it's terrific that you didn't get pigeonholed because a lot of times it's hard to break out of it if you're only in horror. It's hard to break out of that. So congratulations on that. And number two, it's just really cool that you get to, to, you know, to do both. It is cool. I, I do everything. Like I'm just a performing artist who of every discipline. And I don't enjoy if you ask me if I enjoy doing comedy more than drama, I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to choose. Uh, even when I do drama, like in uh, a better place film, I'm kind of like I have this sense of irony and comedic timing that I end up being a comedic timing. thief. <clears throat> it's not intended to make you go ha 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 because right. it's a drama, but it gives a little lightness to the scene. And I think it's self awareness that just makes life funny. So I believe that comedians make the best dramatic actors. Ooh. I've done comedy for fifty two years. Okay, I would love to do drama. And I'm a good dramatic actor because comedy is drama. Yeah. You know, you just take out the laugh and you've got the drama behind it because most comedy is about tragedy. It's about mistakes, accidents, you know, 
So it, it's all very related. So I can understand what you're saying. Thanks. How being being in comedy, you would, would prefer drama. That was what no, you she said. Didn't, she didn't say she preferred. She said she can't choose. She likes them both. Oh, I thought you preferred. I like them both. And I've heard from, you know, some really great comedians that that you don't play anything as comedy. You know, you play it as a drama, and it's funny because... It's, it's funny. Yeah, that's yes. that's my comedy. That's what he was saying. Yeah, that's I what do that sort too. of comedy. Uh, you know, as a stripper, I worked when I was very young, but the rest of my life, I worked all the nightclubs in drag. And I would talk with the audience and go back and forth. And uh, if there was something really dramatic happening, I instantly, instinctively turned it into a joke. And Actually, no, he didn't do it. Like back when he did it, it wasn't called drag. He was a female illusionist because he, oh, yeah. he only worked in straight clubs. He didn't work in gay clubs. No. He didn't yeah. work. Oh, I, so were, was I was a class yeah. act for the day. Bully. I was very famous in my time. Uh, I, I used to There's tell coffee table books of, of female illusionists yeah. from back in the day. And he keeps the centerfold of yeah. it, like in a, a bathtub beginner. floating with suds in my boobs. And there, yeah. anyway, I was uh, I used to tell my friends two things I used to say when I got annoyed. People paid to see me. That's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> Use it. If somebody ever says to you, well, I don't think you're such a great actress, say, People pay to see me. And then <laughs> I do that. I say that still to this day. And then the other thing is my posters were on every lamppost in New York City. <laughs> For advertisements. I, to, I, I had a convertible back then, an Oldsmobile or something. And I remember at night I would take all my friends for a ride with the top down and stop 59th Street, 58th Street. Look, 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 I'm, I'm on that ugly building. They're going to knock down. They stuck my poster. I got the biggest kick out of that. You know, being 21, 2, 3, or 4, you think who the hell you are. But what an honor to be in New York City on, on lampposts. <laughs> Definitely. So let's talk a little bit about, because we only have about, but eight, eight or nine or ten minutes left. So, so what's your bucket list? Um, you've made all these. If you could have made any film that's ever been made, and you could have been in it, what film would you like to be? And then, as you're answering that, think about who would be, who would be like an actor and an actress like that would be your bucket list to be like if you could act it with any actor or an, any actress on the planet. Like, who would you like to be in a film with? Well, my actress that I'd like to be in a film with is deceased, and I just would love to and just. Her. Be in the presence of Lucille Ball at some point. Lucille. She's got a lot to teach, and um, I just I soak it up by watching her. She know? was a nice old broad. I used to belong to Pips in Beverly Hills, and Lucy used to have a bat game and tournament in the back room. And oh. my mother, who loved I Love Lucy, that you wouldn't believe, came to visit us in California. And it so happens that Lucy was passing our table to leave. And I stopped her. I said, I've got to stop you. And I don't do this, Lucille, so don't you know, hate me for it. She started to laugh. I said, but my mother absolutely loves you. You know what she used to tell me? I wish I could be best friends with Lucy. So Lucy turned around and she looked at my mother. She said, anytime, honey, anytime. <laughs> and was very sweet and spoke with us. And she was a, a lovely lady, that's the word, but a tough broad. She didn't speak like a lady, like fancy schmancy. You could hear she was a tough broad. A cool tough broad. A cool tough broad. Okay, so how about a male? Any male that you would like to go up against? Up against? Well, you know, act with. It could act be a love with. interest or it could be a, uh, a partner in crime or it could be anybody. Who's an actor that you think would be really fun And if to you do don't say with? my name, it's okay. Yeah, you don't have to say his name. <laughs> uh, I have always admired Tom Hardy. For oh, wow. That, that's the second time we've gotten that. Yeah, who is he? Uh, yeah, he's been in a ton of stuff. You, you won't recognize him. He's in the What's Wilson Film Warrior, and he has a, a Netflix series out called Taboo right now. Yes, yeah, he's really good. I'll, I'll show you. We had him on our show. No, are you kidding me? He's big. He's like Academy Award nominee. So like, what? We've big. had plenty of those on our show. I know, but not, not yeah, but they've been like ones that aren't as current. He's like, he's like the current? hottest actor right now. Oh. <laughs> he will well, be coming on our not, show. We just haven't gotten it yet. Hmm? Huh? Ron, he was in Mad Max Fury Road. Did you see it? Yes, he's yes. on Mad Max. Which one was he? The guy who was next to Charlize Theron the whole time. Oh, the whole... Charlize Theron. That's he loves Charlize oh, Theron. The most gorgeous woman in the world. That's who I want on our show, too. Charlize. Yeah. I would love to have her. Okay, and what movie would you have liked to have been in? Oh, my favorite film, uh, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Oh, uh, 1956, just cars and 
badass women, go go dancing. It was awesome. Go go oh dancing. God, that's like awesome. Yeah, I remember that period. I love it. No. We, we all had to wear mini skirts and, and, and do go go dancing. So stupid. Big <laughs> tall women that were men doing go go dancing. We all look like we were having a St. Vitus dance attack. So, Mark Scantlin in the chat room, who's on Twitter, <clears throat> says he would love to wrestle you as long as you don't hurt him. And. <laughs> No, no, no. You're not going to get yeah. any – no cheap feels, Buster. And, oh, no, 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 the dog, the dog, the dog. Okay, and, uh, and then we have Tristan we have in Australia. Say hello to Tristan, first of all. Tristan's the coolest guy on the planet. Hey, Tristan. And, uh, uh, he wants to know how you got into becoming a vegan. Oh, thank you. Smart. Smart. Uh, I've been vegan for 23 years, oh, and gosh. I got into it – I was young and on tour with Kenny Rogers – and I stopped, I was already a vegetarian at that point, but we, I was, had insomnia, we were on tour, uh, just me and the bus driver are awake at the, like, 5 a.m. We stop at a refueling station, he goes in, and I'm hungry, I'm just going to waste the time, and as soon as I stepped into the truck stop, I was looking for food, but all I saw was plastic neon packaging, and that was when it happened. I was like, this is not food. I want food. And I was so angry. It was rebellion. I was, I'm, I'm not going to break the system by eating real food. <laughs> you know, the truckers eat it. steak. That's all they eat is steak and that other crap. What's that dried out shit that they pull? Oh, beef oh, jerky. Beef jerky. Who would ever eat the skin of an animal that was <laughs> fermented for 30 years? I so mean, you don't, so, I don't eat like, meat. Do you have I'm to not take, a meat eater. Do you have to Ugh. take food with you pretty much like everywhere? Or like do you are there a lot of vegan well, again we're in Pennsylvania. There's no vegan restaurants in Pennsylvania. Like I'm telling you, like it's like No, there are. This is like plaid, no, are, plaid are, shirt, no, there marry are, your brother there, kinda like no, shit. There, oh. <laughs> you know, Buck, Bucks County, which is Farmersville. But if you go to Center City, Philadelphia, there are lots of great restaurants. Very beautiful city, by the way. I like Philadelphia. I don't like the rest of it, but I like Philadelphia. Well, do you take food with you, or do you pretty much like know where to go, or you do you have a certain snack that you take all the time, or what do you like to do? Well, I've toured the nation in Stomp. I was in Panic at the Disco. I was out with Kenny Rogers. I've been out with so many um, theatrical shows or music artists, and that's hard because you don't have your own kitchen. So oh. you can't really store stuff and then have it for when you need it. But I would make sure I had some basics with me on tour. But really, just shifting my mind frame, you open up, you know, and you get to a place and it looks like you're not going to be able to eat a good meal. But you can. After you learn the system and the system is, is part of your daily life, it's not hard anymore, and living in L.A., easy as pie. Oh, please, everybody's a vegan. I cannot – no, I drove cross country many millions of times on tour and whatever, and you know what I packed my lunch? Uh, romaine lettuce on white bread with mayonnaise. Ugh. Ugh, nothing. That was my salvation because Wait. what was available cross country in those days was garbage. Yeah. I mean, pork bellies or somebody's mother's arm. I don't know what it was. I mean, it was wait, wait. junk. Because okay. uh, we only have three minutes and I got a couple things I got to get in. Okay, so for, uh, so first of all, tell me what did you do? Like when you go on tour with Kenny Rogers and Panic at the Di I met Panic at the Disco at their show in Florida. I used to meet everybody when they were in Florida. Like, what did you write? Because you don't sing. Do you sing? I don't know. Do you sing? Yeah, she sings. I asked and her at the beginning. And I, sang... I thought she was joking. No, she said, can I, actresses do not joke. <laughs> oh, do you have anything out that we would hear you sing? No, I'm not a recording artist, but okay. I grew up doing musical theater. Okay. And I've sang with Kenny Rogers, and I've Great. sang, I actually fronted a band for a couple months. But there's no recordings. It's not like that. Like, my passion is definitely acting and dance. That's um, cool, though, how, would you, disco, how would you find awesome. time to record? I love I mean, Kenny you're Rogers. so busy. Uh, you got to dedicate to that, right? Yes. Yeah, you no, have to absolutely. study. You have to sing every day. It's a, what do you think? You just get out there and sing like an opera singer? No, I no like way. It. All right, so then we want to give some shout-outs. First of all, say hi to Iris. Um, she's in Germany, and she promoted the hell out of the show. She's a super, super awesome chick, and uh, we love her to death. And so just say hi to Iris. You can't wave to her. You have to say hello. <laughs> 
Hi, Iris. <laughs> I've, been, I've noticed you on Twitter. Thank you so much. Yeah, is, she's the coolest. I mean, everybody everybody who tunes into the show and supports the show is fabulous, but she's just the best. We love Iris. And then we want to give a shout out to Doug Shiloh and the cast and crew of Dead Exit Comics, since we're all going to be in it one of these days and uh, the TV show. So we want to say hi to them. And uh, give a shout out to Rich Graff because, like, we actually met him on the streets in New York a couple of weeks ago. Um, what do you think of Rich Graff? I don't know Rich Graff. Oh, you should. <laughs> He's absolutely the most gorgeous new actor that's going to be like the hot he, he played Lucky Luciano. Uh, Look, Lucky, Lucky Luciano. Lucky Luciano in this in the TV series, and. Uh, <laughs> And he's the actual lead guy for like the dead exit thing. Yeah, and, uh, he's going but that's to how be. I, you know, that's how I got kind of reacquainted with you. Was like all the. Oh wait a the minute! He's also exit. on a cover of a magazine, and we're going to the magazine opening party. Yes, yeah, next week. Next week for Rich, he's going to remember the name Rich Graff. He's going to be the next big superstar. Yeah, the Hollywood Reporter wrote him up as the one oh, to watch. Or and so nice, so so sweet, so gentle, so sincere, so. And handsome. Oh, my God, is he gorgeous. Right, I'm trying so to fix my do. daughter up with him. Here we go. All right, everybody. So this is Tanya K. She's super fabulous. Not only is she incredibly gorgeous, but she's got so many talents you can't even, like, handle it all. You can check out what's yeah, going on Yeah, she's a busy broad. TanyaK.com. It's <laughs> T-O-N-Y-A-K-A-Y.com. You can follow her on Twitter at Tanya K. Friday and Saturday, you want to go to the Pin Up Poll Show to get more information uh, go to pinupholeshow.com. Friday night, the show is where? Friday night, Long Beach, the Federal. Saturday night, North Hollywood, the Federal. Where, where is there the Federal go. exactly? In Long Beach, it's on Pine Avenue in the center of everything. Pine in North Mark. Hollywood, it's on Lankershim in the center of the NoHo Arts District. Okay, I know both there. I wish I was going. Damn, we have to be stuck it's, in this okay. when we fucking move there, Pennsylvania. <laughs> So Tanya, we want to thank I you would so much. I would really, let me. I would really, and my my listeners and fans know I don't blow smoke up anybody's ass or tell lies. I truly would have enjoyed your show immensely. I mean, to the max. We'll go when because we're there. it's she all my it stuff. Lot. It's forties pinups and it's burlesque. It's everything I love so much. And anytime and you good have luck anything, with it. Break that, a anytime you have anything you want to promote, just let me know. Tweet me or send yeah. me an email. We'll bring you back anytime. We really enjoyed it, and so did everybody in the chat room. And I'm sure everybody yeah. listening has loved it. And when you do a big bump, think of me. Boom. You got it. <laughs> See, this, and this is from Ron Russell. Boom. <laughs> you're, you're terrific, honey. I love you a lot. We have to catch up in L.A. when we get there. Yes, definitely. We got to go out with you one night. We have to have yes. fun. I'm serious. You'll be my guest so, of honor. If you come to the show, you'll be my guest of honor. Thank you so oh, much. I'm always, I'm always calm. <laughs> have a, we'll have a good, sh have a good time with it, Tanya. Thank you so I much. I will see you in Love L.A., you. Tanya. Bye. Bye, bye, honey. Hey, everybody. Thanks bye. for tuning in, everybody. Just to let We can skip the small talk. Say what you came to say. Haven't seen you around here before. What's your name? Todd. Todd. You must not live around here. Just driving through? No, I, I live here. Hmm. Lucky for me. Focus. Concentrate. Channel it into the circle. It's the most elegant, perfect form. Think of yourself as the circle. You're stripped down. You're simple. You're focused. Have you ever used a gun before? No. Are you kidding me? After today, these guys will shit gold for that crazy bastard. All you did was injure him and look what they did. You got yours, Punch Kiss. I'm happy for you. But now I gotta get mine. I always get mine. Really buy you this car? We, we bought it together. He said he had all these medical school loans and we couldn't buy much. How many did he hit? I found Jake. Where? Dad. You stay here with Betty, I'm gonna go. No! Through that. Stay right there. Logic dictates. Logic dictates you shut your whoremongering mouth. Calm down. That bitch killed this girl's brother. You're not brother and sister, are you? Shit. Look. No! No!
Ugh. You look pathetic.